welcome to High Density. Today we're going to be talking about energy saving. We're going to explain why we think it's important and we're going to talk about how you can help save the environment and also save yourself some money. Yeah, the first thing we looked at was light bulbs because everyone has them, everyone needs them and that's an area where you can really save a lot of money. We did the math here. Took a while. It's pretty complicated but uh, well sooner or later we figured it out. And uh, we have actually several rates here for Berlin, for example, and for New York. How and much? Yeah, how much yeah, you save. How much you could save if okay. you were switching to an 11 watt light bulb from a 60, for example. Because we took 60 watts as basically the average bulb you've got in the average room. Hmm. And an energy saving version, as Ramon says, is only 11 watts of power. You might think that's not much of a difference, but it adds up. Yeah, I mean, that's 80% or so. And there you just think, well, okay, 80%, what's that? Yeah. Uh, so that's why we uh, have figures here in dollars and euros. Let's take Berlin for example. You go from a 60 watt bulb to an 11 watt bulb and that means going from 13 euros a year to 2 euros a year. For ev every light bulb yeah, that you're so running. If you have uh, 15, 20, 30 light bulbs around the house, you're saving, uh, let's say, I don't know, 100 euros a year at least. And that's just the start of it. Light bulbs are where you can make a big difference in energy consumption just like that. It just happens straight away. Change a few light bulbs, you'll get back your investment on the energy saving bulbs and you'll save money in the first year. These bulbs will then last for around five years each, which is way longer than a normal light bulb, increasing mm. your savings. And this has a big impact on the environment because when you're burning that energy, you're also using a lot of resources. To generate that energy, we create a lot of pollution. So in other words, you can cut your light-based energy pollution by 80% by just changing a few bulbs in your house and you will make money by doing it. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, and I mean, it's silly. Look at the normal 60 watt light bulb. You'll just have 30, 40 watts of energy just going into heat, yeah. not, not light. So it's just totally inefficient. From an engineering perspective, they just aren't that good anymore. We mm. can do better and you can buy it in your shop. We have a few examples here. This one yeah. looks probably, it might look horrible to you. That's what most of them look like. But it doesn't have to be this way because uh, the newer models look like this. And I mean, this you just can't it complain about this. It looks like a normal light bulb in essence. More or less. And once it's on, you can't even tell it's uh, an energy saver. If you're in Europe, you can pick one of these up in Ikea for about two euros. Mm, and that's significantly cheaper than uh, at most places. Right. I don't know where you go in the US. I guess Walmart or something. Probably. Yeah. Thing is, they're probably made in China. So now you could uh, start a discussion about, you know, how much energy is wasted producing them there and shipping them over here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I think, uh, you know. All in all, you're going to save energy. You're going to do the world a little bit of a favor. Mm -hmm. Now, light bulbs are where we started. It doesn't mean we stopped there. We kept going. <laughs> in fact, we kept going and we went towards computers because we are both geeky. And we wanted mm -hmm. to know how much energy do computers use? Again, the numbers are surprising. Yeah, we have a, a comparison here between a laptop, for example, and uh, a gaming machine. You know, gaming machines need a lot of power just to drive their graphics cards, for example, or uh, high-powered processors, etc., etc. Right. That's pretty inefficient. Uh, as a comparison here, we have 122 euros a year for a gaming rig versus 13 a year for a laptop. That's in power consumption. In, in kind of statistical numbers, a laptop uses the same amount of energy as a 60 watt light bulb, where a gaming computer uses the same amount of energy as a hairdryer, around five to 600 watts mm. at least. And just uh, think of running a hairdryer all day long. You just don't do that. Yeah. But and these numbers we're giving you, the savings there of like 100 euro, these are for using the equipment for three hours a day. Mm. If you are using it more than that, you're looking at costs that will escalate quickly. Mm. For those people leaving a gaming rig on 24 hours a day, they're, they're spending hundreds of euro a year on nothing, really. Nothing. Absolutely. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, okay, I, I want a gaming rig and I, I, I don't want a laptop or something like that. And you might be thinking, I've got a gaming rig. I only use it an hour a day. I knock it into standby. Guys, mm. come on. However, you see, it's not as simple as you might think. Mm, standby yeah. is not a solution for energy saving. Standby is evil, and uh, that's why many people have started calling devices in standby power vampires. Uh, it means that even if a device is in standby, it's still drawing power from the net. 
Astonishingly, it might be drawing almost as much power on standby as when it's fully functional. Mm, yeah, that was the case with uh, several set-top boxes that are coming up now for HD television, for example, or just your normal cable box. There are some that might draw 10 watts in standby and 11 watts during operation, and that's just ridiculous. That's because these machines are still functioning. They're just not displaying their functionality to you when you knock them into standby. Yeah, worst case I heard of is a set-top box that just disables its picture signal once it goes into standby. The rest stays, stays on. And so it's still working as a toaster oven in the background. Mm. In other words, when you have electronic equipment, Putting it into standby isn't saving money, it isn't saving energy. If it is saving a small amount, it's saving nothing like as much as you would save by simply hitting the off switch. And Ramon mentioned power vampires. Yeah, we yeah. have uh, another one here. Here's a power vampire, uh, I don't know, of epic proportions, and everyone has them. Power bricks. This is evil. These things burn energy all the time. If you have a power brick and it's attached to a device, you switch off the device, the power brick is still burning energy. That's incredible, isn't it? It's silly. Even from an engineering standpoint, it's just it totally silly. It no would sense. be possible, but a bit more expensive to get these circuits to shut down completely. And that's why many right. manufacturers aren't doing it. But uh, because they're not doing it, you can do it for them. It's not so hard. Yeah. <laughs> All you need is one of these, Something a power like strip with a magic ingredient. This little switch is important here. The on and off switch. If all of your power blocks are on a strip like that, uh, when you're finished using your equipment, just, just switch it off and you'll save a ton of energy. Yeah. I mean, uh, look at, look at an, ex an example from my place, for example. Uh, I have a phone that runs over the internet through a cable modem because I'm a geek. And uh, that means I have three devices running all the time and they're actually running. But each of these devices has a power brick attached to it. So no matter what I do, even if I don't use the phone, it will still draw power. And so what I could do, for example, is attach all of them to a power strip and just switch it off overnight because I don't want people calling me overnight anyway. It's that That's simple. Way. It's something you can do. And you can buy smart power strips where when you turn off the main device, it will cut the power to all of the other devices attached to the power strip. Those aren't too expensive either. Now, energy saving isn't something where you have to be an engineer or have technical knowledge. We actually have very good ways to understand what is energy efficient and what isn't. There are rating systems. In the European Union, we have, what's it called again, the uh, energy I label? I think it's just the energy label, the EU energy label, something like that. And in the US, there's the Energy Star system. I think the EU energy label is worth talking about just briefly. Mm, definitely. Uh, the EU version is very simple to understand because uh, all they do is they rate each device, uh, they give it them a rating of A to G. G is very bad, A is very good. And it's color coded. Green is good and I think it's red is bad. Red is horrible. Okay, and it's that simple. You just go for the green devices. The greener they are, the better. And things are getting better. I mean, some devices are beyond A. We've had new ratings introduced, A plus and A plus plus. Yeah, freezers and fridges are getting there and uh, other devices are following. And the cool thing there is uh, everyone thinks, well, it's hard to compare different devices. And that's true. I mean, you, you can't compare a, a hair dryer, for example, easily to a freezer. It just it doesn't work. It's not simple math. Uh, that's why these ratings are cool, because they work across the board. They work for a car or for a freezer or for a hair dryer, and even for monitors, uh, computers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right, so when you're purchasing a device, just keep an eye out for the EU Energy Label or the Energy Star Label and try and get the devices which score best. It will save you money and it makes a big difference to the environment. We think it's an important subject. Our houses are full of electronics, we're burning a lot of power, and with just a little bit of extra thought, we can make a real difference. Hmm. I think that's about it. Yeah, that should be it. Okay, thanks for watching High Density and we'll catch you soon. Goodbye.